Hello everyone, my name is James. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, we're going to look into A-Level Computer Science Chapter 26, File Processing and Exception Handling. And this is the chapter outlined. Let's look into revise, not look into, revise what a record is. And a record is a user-defined data type that encapsulate multiple related views, like a string, integer, allowing for grouping of diverse data under a single name. And it is also a very important component in object-oriented programming. And this is how we create a record in Python we call it class um, in the Python programming language. And these are the data that it encapsulates. And then let's see how we can instantiate a product record. Let's say I'm creating a class called product. It has for the following properties. And this is how I create a product record in Python. And to access each attribute, you simply write down the name of the variable dot the name of the attribute. So I have prepared a JPython notebook to showcase all the codes we need for today's lecture. And if I were to run this code, you will see that first of all, I declare the product class, and then I create an instance of the class called milk with the price expiration date, whether they are diary. And this is how I access one of the attribute of the product record. So we can also modify the, the view of a record by simply doing, for example, product one dot name is equal to, so instead of milk, I want to change it to Australian milk. And then if I were to print that out, Again, you will see that the product, the name attribute of the product will have been changed. So if I run it again, you'll see that milk is first printed, followed by the Australian milk, Australian milk here. And this is how you first declare a record, instantiate a record, access an attribute in the record, and modifying an attribute of a record. Now, get back to our slide. This is what I just showed. You can modify stuff. Now, um, in the previous chapters, we learned about binary files. So one disadvantage of text file is that they restrict us to writing strings in a linear sequential fashion with the ability to append string at the file end. But there are times when you want to store records. For example, in the previous example, what if you want to store everything all the details about a record like product. That's when you need binary files. And in this video, I will teach you how to write your class, your record into binary files and how to retrieve them by reading it. So we're looking to first, the first method, sequential file processing. So writing records to a file one record after the other. This is how you do it in pseudocode. You open a file, use a for loop, get record for each file. And this is how you put record instead. So getting the record means retrieving, putting the record means putting it into it. So that's how you do it in pseudocode. And I want to show you how to do it in Python. So this is the sample code. So what I do is that I create an empty list and using a for loop, I create 100 products. I basically just assign them random price, random expiration date, and random whether they are diary or not and then I'll append the product into the list. And the key thing of this demonstration is to show you how to um, put all these records into a binary file, which is a file called .dat, all right, access extension. And the way we put file is that we first need to import the pickle library and use pickle.dump, dump the product into the file. So let me show you in code. I think it will be, make more sense. So that's exactly what I just explained. And when I run this code, nothing seemed to happen. And, but then we can go back to the document tab. You can see that product dot underscore that is being created. So if I were to go back to my code here, and this is what ex exactly what I have done. And then if you want to read it instead, so now we have the process product underscore that data dot that file. And what if you want to retrieve data from it? That's when you use pickle.load file and then you retrieve you can append you can first 
load all the files, append it to retrieve product list, and then use a for loop to print out all the product details. So I'm going to run it for you to see. This is the code which I basically put the record into a binary file. And this is the code which I read every data from the binary file. So if I run this code, you'll see that all the product details would have been printed. Of course, the product name, price, expiration dates they are random, but this is just to showcase how you can store record into a binary file. All right, so that's about it. Um, let's look into another way to store record into binary file, random access file processing. So random access file, it works somehow like the hash table. It allows direct access to a specific location within the file, enable reading or writing of data at any position based on um, the file content. Random access file processing is achieved by using hash function to compute file offset or position based on unique identifiers, allowing direct access to specific data location. So this is how you do the random access file processing in pseudocode. First of all, you open the file for random, and then you use a hash function to figure out the address which you should be putting a file. And use the function seek to seek where you should be putting the file, sorry, putting the record, and you put the record into the product. I think it will be clearer if I show you the code to do it in Python. So first, it's exactly the same thing, a product class, and I create a few instances of them putting into the products list. And then with open random access dot, basically I'm creating a new file, dot DAT file, and I put all the products into its file. And to do that, I first need to hash the product name and I put it into address and use the function file.seek address to seek where is the location I should be putting in the file. But don't worry about it. Um, Python will handle it. You don't even need to know the exact location. And just do pickle.dump product into file. And that's how you do random access file processing and searching for an address. So this is how you retrieve it. You put your name and then you hash the name and using the search address, you can retrieve the details of the file. So let me show you how to do it in Python. And this is a file that I just put on my slide. So I run this code and you shall see that, okay, first I dump all the product details into my binary file. And this is the part which I retrieve the product name product details. So you can see that search product cheese, and this is the details of indeed the cheese product. I can also change it to, um, let's do bread. It should see a different thing getting retrieved. Bread, what's the price, what's the expiration date, etc. And this is amazing. Um, that's how easy it is to do in Python. Feel free to copy and paste the code into your IDE to test it out. All right, that's about it for putting records into files. The last part of this video is called exception handling. It is useful for addressing a runtime error. In other words, you can say it allows code to fail gracefully. So this is how you do it in pseudocode. And I will show you how to do it in Python. But before that, let me introduce to you a few errors that will happen. IO error, input and output error when you try to open a non-existent file. Okay, import error when you try to import a module that is not there. Value error when the function receives an argument of correct type but with an invalid value. Keyboard interrupt when your code is running, you put control C to stop it. That's keyboard interrupt. EOF stands for end of file. That's the error when you are reading a file and it reaches the end of file unexpectedly. Zero division error is when you try to divide a number by zero. And I want to show you how it works in Python. So let me give you an example of one, the code without try and accept. So let's run this code. What this code is that do is that it will do, give you the result when 10 divided by whatever input you give. And if I were to do two, you see that everything works fine because two is a valid value. But if I were to run it again, and I try to put zero as my input, you can see that the error code has, has been displayed. 
and this is not so graceful. And that's when try next set comes in. You put the code that you want to try into the try segment. And then what Python will do is that if there is an error happening here, so in this case, accept zero division error, Python, instead of showing this program, it will print this message instead. And it will also call, catch the other types of exception and print out what's the error there. Um, the finally code segment basically it will run all the time regardless of whether you have an error or not. So let's try to run it. Um, let's try the zero division error and see the contrast. Now, so with a try code, you can see that the code has failed, but it failed gracefully. The error message is printed. At, at least this is a lot easier to see than this one. Um, of course, I can also do another error. So instead of two, I put um, two but in string form and I run this oh I got an arrow yeah but if I were to run this this shall give me an arrow that says that the data type is not correct so let me try to see if I can restart the kernel okay restart and let me try to run this code yeah that's okay <laughs> all right so I'm gonna write three so you can see that invalid trivial for int function. Again, it fails gratefully, and it also tells me what exactly did I messed up. And that's try and accept uh, the code here. Hopefully this explains how um, exception handling work. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to help. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.